of your grace and mercy to glorify your resurrection with pure hearts to celebrate your victory with holy hymns and to proclaim your might with pure tongues we thank you for your love and we worship you crying out Christ is risen he is truly risen to you be glory, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. <coughs> Peace be with the church and her children. raise glory, honor, and praise to the living and immortal one who gave life to his people by his cross, salvation to his church, and happiness to his flock by his resurrection. When he appears, he shall give joy to his inheritance. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast, and all the days of our lives now and forever. <clears throat> we worship and praise you, O only begotten Son. You descended into the darkness of the tombs, and you worked wonders in the realm of the dead. By your resurrection you freed the captives. By your voice you awakened the righteous and the just who had gone to their rest in the sleep of death. You gathered the nations to worship you and to proclaim your salvation. They rejoice and they cry out, on Friday the King endured pain and was crucified, and today victory has been achieved by his resurrection. On Friday a lance pierced his side, and today in his compassion the waters of baptism flow forth. On Friday he was crowned with thorns, and today he has adorned his church with a crown of splendor. Today is the day of rejoicing in the resurrection. Today is the day of rejoicing for all who have gone to their rest in the hope of the resurrection. Today, with the fragrance of this incense, the church and her children celebrate and sing hymns of glory, saying, O Creator of life, you have saved us by your passion and have given us life by your resurrection. Now renew our image by your grace, Clothe our bodies with the power of the Spirit, so that we may shine in the robe of glory and in its light to see you, the true Bridegroom. 
In your grace, make us and all the faithful departed worthy of your heavenly kingdom, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Sacrifice yourself for us, we give you thanks. O oh, incense of forgiveness, we worship you, for you have brought us close to your Father, enriched us by your birth, purified us by your holy baptism, sanctified us by your crucifixion, reconciled us to the Father by your resurrection. You raised us by your ascension, and you adorned us with the gifts of your Spirit. Now, O Lord, accept our incense and fill us always with your sweet fragrance so that our tongues may never cease in giving thanks to you forever. Kaddishat, Aloha, Kaddishat, Chayalatana, Kaddishat, Oh, 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 
is rejoicing for her shepherd truly rose Christ who died for his people conquered death to give new life St. Paul to the Romans. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and to children forever. Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God it, on their behalf is for salvation. I testify with regard to them that they have zeal for God, but it is not discerning. For in their unawareness of the righteousness that comes from God and their attempt to establish their own righteousness, they did not submit to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the law. For the justification of everyone who has faith, Moses writes about the righteousness that comes from the law. The one who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will go up to heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or, Who will go down into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we preach. For if you confess with your, with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and his soul is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. For scripture says, no one who believes in him will put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Praise be to God always.
Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Luke writes, While they were still speaking about these things, Jesus stood in their midst and he said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified, and they thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise within your hearts? Look, look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. Because a phantom does not have flesh and bones as you can see, that I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still incredulous because of joy, and they were amazed, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of baked fish, and he took it, and he ate it in front of them. And he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds in order to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. This is the truth, peace be with you. For I bear witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they, not knowing the justice of God, seek to establish their own, having not submitted themselves to the justice of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This chapter 10 in the letter to the Romans, St. Paul is talking about the Jewish people. He's talking about Israel, the Jews, on the conversion, they're not conversion. And he's answering a question. He's saying, first of all, I'm a Jew. I'm a Pharisee. I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. And what he's saying in this section is, I bear, and it's the beginning of the quotation that you have in the bulletin. He says, I bear witness to them that they do have zeal for God but it's a zeal which is disordered and out of place. And that's why they've not recognized Christ who has come. And he says they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. In other words, it's not informed justice, informed zeal. And then he goes on in the next verse to explain why. Because they, the Jewish people, They, not knowing the justice of God, 
and seeking to establish their own through their observances, through the law, through the different things that have been taking place, that for they, not knowing the justice of God, has sought seeking to establish their own, have not submitted themselves to the justice of God. So this is always one of those crooks when you read the scriptures. It's like, what is this justice? What does this mean? Justice for us means don't do a rolling stop through a red light. Not because you just have an accident, because it violates the law. And if you get arrested, you'll be in heap big. That's our idea of justice. But that is obviously not what St. Paul is talking about. So it's a much better, bigger vision. St. Thomas Aquinas talks about use, I-U-S. It's the foundation of our word juridical, use in Latin. But use is the notion, it can be translated, sometimes it's translated as law, sometimes it's translated as by right in English. But use is a much larger notion of order. Use is the harmony, the order, the integrity from which flows laws, verbal things. Don't roll through red lights. Use is a large picture. And St. Thomas, when he speaks about it, use is the manifestation. It is what is in the divine mind, the order of existence. God's existence, first and foremost, obviously, he is his own existence but in order within the divine intellect of which he chooses freely to create. So the action of giving directives, the Ten Commandments, love your neighbor as yourself, these verbal directives, as our Lord says, eating the baked fish in the gospel, these are the words that I have spoken to you. The words and the law of God that comes forth and even the act of creation, of making things exist, are reflections and extensions of use within the divine mind. That is the justice of God. So the word justice, justitia, is coming from this word use, but use is a very large concept in Latin. So our word justice that he's talking about here, and what he's saying is the Jews are not recognizing God among us, the Messiah. They're zealous for God, yes, but they're tripping themselves up because they're not recognizing the use of God, the justice of God manifesting himself in the Messiah, God with us. And instead what they're doing is they're trying through their observances, through their dietary laws, through all the things that God had given them before in order to prepare them for the coming of the Messiah, that once the Messiah came, they do not recognize him because they're trying to accomplish their own use rather than submitting, recognizing. Submitting the word literally means throwing ourselves under. So in other words, rather than recognizing, they are spending their time in this, uh, this ignorant zeal, trying to form their own order and harmony, their own justice, and thereby ignoring, not submitting to the order and the harmony, the justice of God. This is why when we speak about in our prayers every day of the just who have gone before us, of the dead who have gone before us, those who are just, that you in the Husoyo today, that you visited and worked wonders in the realm of the dead, and you called to life the faithful departed and the just. When we use the word just, the just means that they are precisely the individuals who have freely entered into that divine harmony and order, which is use. That's the justice of God. It's not the question of obeying laws. It's the question of recognizing an integrity and a beauty of a harmony of an order, which ultimately is the divine mind. It's simply what God intends things to be like. And the just, they are people with ears open to hear and eyes to see. They respond to that grace and they become the individuals precisely that they are meant to be according to the justice of God, according to the use. 
So that's a really profound theological notion. I throw it out to you just to consider, because you read about the justice of God all throughout the scriptures. And because of the fact that bringing this back to the order and the harmony of the way things are meant to be, that requires two things. One, I recognize that I'm not in original harmony, that my life is not where it is supposed to be at this moment. That's the repentance. The very foundation of the word repentance, pena, means it causes us suffering. I realize I screwed up. I could have done better on this exam and I didn't. I could have done this paint job better in the dining room, but I was preoccupied because I wanted to get out of the house early. Instead of doing the full day's job, I just raced through it. So now my wife's ticked off. That's the beginning of the recognition that my life is not where it's supposed to be. And therefore, you have the metanoia, which is the change of the spirit, the change of the noose of the mind. So you have the recognition, the repentance, to recognize where I have to go. That is the conversion process, because my desire is to be fully healed and to find this integrity in the use of Dei, in the harmony and the order of God. That's the process of conversion. That is the process of salvation. And because we're moving from something which is unharmonious to something that is harmonious, from something which is out of order to something which is more beautiful, that is the whole conversion process that we call the healing or salvation. So when St. Paul is saying here is, I do pray for them, but I'm not going to say that what they're doing is fine because they have zeal. He says it's because their zeal is ignorant, and therefore, objectively, it's disordered. So by, because of its disorder, he says, the disorder comes from the fact that they're trying to do something that they cannot do. So on this Mother's Day, think of your two-year-olds in the past, yanking things out of your hand. I can do it, I can do it, me, I do it myself. Your three-year-old who would insist on doing it. Sometimes it's charming, and sometimes it's profoundly annoying, because now you're going to like break something in the kitchen. That is the line when he says that they're seeking to institute their own justice. It's the yanking out and saying, I do it myself. I set up this way, I do it. And so St. Paul is going to a very profound aspect of this mystery. To this day, the theological mystery of what is Israel. It is the only ancient entity, culturally, politically now, that still exists 4,000 years later. You don't meet Babylonians. You don't meet Chaldeans. These people, these peoples as recognized peoples, as units culturally, ethnically, they're gone. Yet Israel still exists theologically because of this profound mystery. So that's why St. Paul says in this text, but the very purpose, the end of the law, the reason for the law of Moses is the Messiah, is the Christ. It does not have a value in itself for any, it only exists for one purpose, which is to prepare for the coming of the Messiah. So this is a very profound text. And if you understand this text, then you understand on this last Sunday that we're going to talk about the Sunday, the Lord's Day, is to understand then quite simply why the fathers of the church say that new Sunday, the octave of Easter, is actually more important than Easter. That's why when I mentioned the gentleman who was walking out to wish me happy Divine Mercy Sunday, and it's like, New Sunday. It's been New Sunday for almost 2,000 years. Mercy Sunday for about the last 20. Okay. New Sunday because what St. Gregory of Nazianzen says, and this is what I leave you with, because this is the use day for time. How time has been transformed also. So that St. Gregory of Nazianzen says that the Pascha, Pesco, as we call it, Easter, is the commemoration of a historical event which brings and initiates our salvation. 
But when that Sunday returns in that first octave, and when you remember the octave, the octave was the circumcision. It's in the bulletin this week. I wrote it out because it's this, some of this doctrine of the fathers is complicated. So I spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours this week to give you the biggest bulletin that you've ever seen. And then I had to make 50 booklets of 12 pages also because at the second mass we have a chrismation. So there's a whole other liturgical book. So we've been running nonstop all this week. But I knew that this doctrine is not easy. Even when I have St. Gregory Nazianzen in front of me and you're reading it, you're like, okay, I have to go back and read this paragraph again. So I understand the problem that can take place. So in the bulletin, we try to give you the, the skeleton of it. But St. Gregory of Nazianzen says that when the Easter comes, it's a commemoration of the historical event of our Lord's glorious resurrection, the beginning of the new creation. But as those seven days pass of our calendar and we come to that new Sunday, the next Sunday, the eighth day which follows that week of the seventh, it itself is a commemoration of the eternity which is God himself, of the kingdom in its fullness. That's why the Sunday of time is renewed. It is, in a sense, the conversion process of the calendar. And so he says that when it returns on that octave day, which is so important to the law of Moses, the circumcision on the octave day, for example, or in the vows that are made, the octave day, the eighth day is when you find the fullness of this vow that you've made, he says that when they return on the octave of that following Sunday, the eighth day, the new Sunday, he says is greater because it is the octave. He says, why is that greater because of the octave? He says, because Easter is related to a past event in which we now presently live in this new Sunday, but that this day then is not related to the healing of mankind in the sense of the past. It's related to the vision of the future, of the fullness of grace in the kingdom, the grace that we live now. He says that that eighth day, the new Sunday, is related to the beatific vision, to life within eternity, and therefore the life that we live now, the world of grace. This is why Sunday is not just another day. It's why we have special manners in which we live the Sunday, that we set aside our manual labor, that we set aside our mundane and worldly affairs of shopping, which is why residually of Christianity, you're still, most of your business offices are still closed for the moment. Because we set aside, not because they're bad, but we set them aside because the focus of the day, well, the reflection of the beatific vision was the day for the adoration of God, for prayer. And so we set aside all that mundane administrations of businesses and offices. And we set aside all that commerce and shopping. And we set aside the physical labors so that our minds and our spirits can be free in order to render adoration and prayer to God. Because it is the renewal of time. Because time is transformed in the order of grace, which is why that Sunday is new. And so when we look at our catechism books and it talks about, well, on a holy day of obligation, you have to go to mass, they're not laws. They're not just directives. They are expressions of something because of the profound understanding of what is a day that is holy. It's not just like Tuesday that I do some more pious things on. It is a completely different day in which I am freed in order to become the individual that God created me to be, which is not a manual laborer, which is not a plower of fields. It is for an individual who is transfigured by grace, whose focus is upon the beatific vision, and whose destiny is freedom as the children of God. That is all the reflection of the use day, of the justice of God, and it's the gift that's been bequeathed to us. So let us enter into it richly, find its freedom, and then we understand what St. Paul means when he says that the end, the purpose of all the law, the only reason for the law is the Christ. And he says unto the justice 
for everyone who believes in that fact. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the earth to live here and became human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come and give him glory as a judge to the living and dead, and his kingdom will not have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the door of the Lord of the Father, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Itelwot ma debhei daloho, halwot aloho dam chare tayut, vainun selwot aibu tau keyunan baitoch vesku deb hayeklo, what for a show?
Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you, out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, and Saint Jude, and the prophet Isaiah. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of the Twelve Apostles on page 754. 754. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Merciful and holy Lord and Father, through your only begotten Son, you have prepared this spiritual banquet for us. Accept the offering of this bloodless sacrifice and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and divine love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor, love and faith that are pleasing to God. and security and your true love and divine mercy be with us and among us all the days of our lives. 
that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. O Lord, we bow before you and ask you to look upon us with mercy. Make us worthy to approach your holy altar with pure hearts and holy souls and bodies, that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you my brothers and sisters forever and with your spirit let us lift up our thoughts our minds and our hearts Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to glorify and praise you, O God the Father, for you are holy and the giver of life. You are blessed with your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit. You are surrounded by the cherubim and seraphim who sing with your voices in heavenly melodies. They cry out, glorify and proclaim. your only begotten Son became flesh of the pure Virgin Mary, and by his divine plan he saved and redeemed us. What so ya bertal me dao kado mara Saba hula mene kulhu Ho no denita Fahro diela Dahlo fai kun wahla sagi em Metafaseo meti hem Hosoyon Home wa hoye dan alam alamin. Amin. O kanna alakosa damsi kwa men hamra wa men mayo. Barahu kadesh. Ya bil talmidao kado mara. Sabishtawa mehne kulhu ho no denita de mahundila diati ki hadato dahlo faikun wahlav sagi en ete shadu meti hab ho soyon ho me wa ho yedan alam alamin. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do so in memory of me until I come again. Of all people, we remember your plan of 
salvation. And we ask you to have mercy on your worshippers and to save your inheritance when you appear at the end of time to reward all people justly according to their deeds. For this your church implores you and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, As we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We May these holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins, the healing of souls and bodies, and the strengthening of consciences so that none of your faithful may perish. Rather, make us worthy to live by your Spirit and to lead a pure life. We raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. We offer you, O Lord, this divine sacrifice for your church, especially for our fathers and shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, the Shadow Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops of the true faith with blameless lives and with purity and holiness. May they guide your church and present to you a faithful people who honor your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. Remember, O Lord, your people here before you, especially those who have presented these offerings. Forgive them so that they may always live blameless lives in your presence and recognize the blessings that you bestow upon them. For you are good and rich in graces. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord Remember, O Lord, the civil leaders throughout the world, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, especially Mary, the Mother of God, the prophets, the apostles, martyrs, and confessors, John the Baptist, Stephen the Archdeacon, St. Joseph, St. Jude, and the prophet Isaiah. Assist us through their prayers and make us worthy to rejoice with them in your kingdom. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and the teachers of the true faith who have endured sufferings for the sake of your church and your people. May we truly and faithfully follow in their footsteps. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the faithful departed who have left us and have gone to their rest hoping in you, awaiting that life-giving voice calling them to life. Accept the offerings we present to you on their behalf and have mercy on them in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. <coughs> Grant 
grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. To your mercy, may our prayer rise our Jesus, which we all have to your Father through you, to you, to the glory. Compassionate Lord, may we, your lowly servants, be made worthy to pray with purity and holiness and to call upon you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of thine Amen. Yes, O Lord, lover of all people, deliver us from the evil one and from his deceitful ways. And do not forsake us, lest temptation overcome us. For yours is the kingdom, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. O Lord, bless your faithful people who bow before you. Deliver us from all harm and make us worthy to share in these divine mysteries with purity and holiness. That through them we may be forgiven and be made holy. And we raise glory to you now and forever. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory.
again and again we thank you, O Lord, who raised glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. And Lord of all people, have mercy on us. We thank you, Lord God and Father, 
And we ask that this divine communion be for the forgiveness of sins and of the glory of your holy name, and that of your only Son and of your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. O Lord Jesus, our God and Savior, you became flesh for our sake, and by sacrificing yourself, you saved us. Deliver us from damnation and make us temples of your holy name, for we are your people and your inheritance, and we glorify and honor you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So certainly I wish the abundant blessings upon all the mothers among us, Thank you for having said yes to life, that there is a generation, especially in these days when we've seen for the first time in American history, our birth rates are down and our population barely grows because there are many who do not say yes to life. So especially a double thank you to all of you good mothers. May the angels surround you in peace and grace and may the Lord bless you these days of your life. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Yeah.